Welcome to the Seraphine podcast. And we're fiending over afterlife with Ricky Gervais. We're on season one. We're on the final episode. So if you haven't watched episodes one through five, do it. It will change your life and the way you look at the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like uh, going into this episode, do you have any expectations? I'm just excited to see. I just have a fascination with Emma and Tony's relationship. Yes. So I'm just excited to see how that unfolds because in the last episode, they showed a little bit of interest in each other. Yes. And you could see that he was starting to like be more outward about how, he, how yeah. like that he likes her. I couldn't help but relate to Emma because again, with my husband and his first wife passing, I thought in my head like how will I ever be the love of his life yeah um how can I ever compare and I had been through so many relationships that had gone south to mm -hmm. where um you know you 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 know I have these conversations with Giovanna a lot because Giovanna's single yeah um you're so lucky you found your person you know now and I see the I see the calmness in you that I wish I had had at your age. Yeah. Um, and I understand when you get kind of like shut down, a little shut off after being through so many relationships. And then when you finally find your one and he's already loved someone yeah, and his heart's been broken and he still holds a place. And like a lot of people who have divorces, like they don't like their spouse, right? Yeah. Not in the case of my husband. He just thinks... You know, he's so sweet. He always says wonderful things about Jennifer. And, and I he always said, you guys would have loved each other, you Aww. know. So this episode really, um, I was really rooting for, for the relationship because I saw a lot of myself and Emma yeah. and the caregiver in me, like wanting to make sure people are okay. So it starts out with his wife saying, you know, you... I've had the best life and the world will, will, will carry on. So please. And she begs them, find someone else. And I'm like, oh. That just gives me the goosebumps. That's talk about a selfless person. Yeah. Like we, that is true love. When you want, like you know that you're you're about to leave this earth and you're about to part from the person that I have goosebumps right now. Yeah. Like you're the love of your life and you're like, I want you to be happy. Yeah. Like that is true love. It is. It is. And it, it, it's not going to be with me and I know that. But that's true love. And that is so special. Yeah. It's interesting. Sometimes when you love someone, you have to let them go. Yeah. And you don't know what at point, even in your marriage, mm -hmm. you will find that sometimes you have to let them go or, or have them feel the void. Um, and it's, it's so complicated and beautiful. And, but when you're forced into it, um, it takes a lot, um, I think it takes so much to just be that that way. I see my own mom and my dad, you know, thinking about their age and yeah. you know my dad's illness and 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 wanting to not talk about it, um, but also really, you know, we talked last week about or last episode um, about the kind of Kevorkian thing of like not having your loved one in pain. Yeah, and. Um, you know, there's this really profound, I'm going to skip to the very end of that, this quote of, I think it's the missing one of, it's close. Um, it's when Anne is talking about um, that she's, she's kind of stronger out of the two. Yeah. And she, she was like, I'd rather be left on this earth, you know, missing him than him here missing me. And exactly. you really, like, I saw your eyes like. Yeah, yeah, I would, I feel the same way. I mean, I, I would, I'm the kind of person that with people, with people that I love, like I would rather be, um, take, take the, the blows. pain yeah. than yeah. have my person take the, take like back in the day, people would say like, would you rather break up with someone or have someone break up with you? Yeah. Rather someone break up with me a hundred times. Yep. I can't do that to someone. Yeah. So kind of the same sort of thing, especially with someone that you love so much. Like I would never want uh, Hassan to feel that way, feel my like absence and be that sad about me, be me leaving. So yeah. isn't it crazy what we'll put ourselves through to alleviate the pain of others? Yeah. And then there are people who just don't care. And it's funny because with Ricky in his Tony character, mm -hmm. he's really trying to convince us that he doesn't care. And yeah. in this episode, I love it, how it unfolds. So, you know, he goes, which I think is so freaking awesome. Um, he he 
he goes from this like video to like right into the story for the Tambury Gazette, which is um, the local baby looks exactly like Adolf Hitler. Um, it was hilarious because we actually did not talk in episode five about the breast milk. Oh my god! And the pudding and the like the stories they have to cover. So in episode five, he, they have to cover a story about this woman who makes um, rice pudding out of her breast milk. Yep. And, and bread out of her yeast. We were like her natural <laughs> yeast. <laughs> I mean, the stories they have to cover. So then, like, this is the freaking cherry on top where you yeah. have an Adolf Hitler baby. Like, <laughs> Tony's like, why Adolf Hitler? Like, Do is you that want a mole? Your baby to look like Adolf Hitler? <laughs> oh yeah, because you thought it was a mole. By the way, they it's not. It's not real. They draw it on. And they push his hair forward. Oh my God. It was, it. it was so uncomfortable. And then he's like, anyone will do it, anything to be in the paper, even make their baby look like yes. it. It's so bad. It makes no sense. Oh my God. Not at all. So then, um, Kath sees him at the end uh, of that interview, you know, coming back into, you know, their little circle and she's, you know, basically trying to get to Ricky. Cause I think she sees, the feeling of loss and suicidal tendency in yeah. him. And that's why she keeps poking at him. Yeah. She's always poking at him, trying to get him, just him. Yeah. And I think it's because she sees a lot of herself yeah. in him. And I realize I do that with you and Aaron and G mm -hmm. because the qualities I see in you, a lot of times I'm hypercritical of and like Johnny will say it all the time and he'll be like, Jesus, why do you keep like leave? Like he'll be like leave Aaron alone, or like you know with G, like he'll he'll do it. And with you, he's like, oh, it's because you think you're so much like her. And I'm like, I'm like, no, that's not it. But then it's funny because you know this reflected back to me. Yeah. Because she's asking him about heaven or hell. She's she's like, why don't you go around raping and killing people? All these thoughts that honestly, like. I've had in my head when I've been really super sad and been like, like, what's the point? And then, she, you know, then she really harnesses onto like spirituality. She's got yeah. this snow globe, but it's empty. Yeah. So then, you know, this is when they talk about why it's empty. Yeah. And then he's trying to talk to her about like, what is it that makes you like love life? Yeah. What did you think of her answer? And do you know anyone like Kat? So what when, was her answer? When she's talked about things that she just liked to laugh, like yeah. things that would make her laugh like Kevin Hart. I felt sad for her because that's the first thing that she could think of. She doesn't have like, he says like, what do you love? Yeah. And she says, I love a good laugh, which, yeah, that's, that's good. But it's not the thing that comes right to the top of yeah. your head, right? Well, at first she doesn't say anything. anything. She's Did like, she asks him, she does like a counter question. She just repeats what she's he says. Like, she's like, a something like and or yeah. what do you or something like that he's like what you mean and yeah. or what do you mean it was like a rhetorical question yeah. yeah he's like when someone says what do you love you you answer it something like that yeah. um and that's all she could come up with kevin hart and he's kind of just like because he knows what he loves i mean he yeah. loves his wife his dog yep that's about it. But yep. he has something like that would come to his mind automatically. Um, I don't think I know anyone, not off the top of my head, that would yeah. be like Kath. But I felt for her in that moment. And that's when I kind of started to see her character. Yeah. Like, and, 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 and like deep down, she is missing something. Yeah. Like there's a lot of layers there. And, and, and but not yeah. like there's the other thing that is some people they're just they they're it's not that they're shallow. Yeah. It's just they haven't. You know, you know what it is? It reminds me of when I first brought brought this to you as an idea to talk about the show. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about loss and love. And I was like, I've never had, any, I've never experienced great loss in my life. Yeah. I didn't have any big deaths when I first started watching this show. Yeah. And then it's inevitable. Like yeah. it's inevitable. I know. We all die. We're on a ticking clock. And this show helped me prepare prepare myself to be a better friend to my friend Sally yeah. who you know her hu husband has early onset Alzheimer's I never understood what it would be like yeah. um, it m prepared my heart for my husband to be a better wife yeah. and it also made me understand my dad and like the feelings I'm going to be like the ups and downs of 
a diagnosis of ALS and like yeah. how angry I get and how just broken heart. Yeah. And how angry and frustrated and how I need to talk about it, but I can't talk about it because my dad's super private. Yeah. So I get to use this show as a way to process. Yeah. Sorry, guys, if you're listening, I'm a really ugly crier and you can probably imagine my face. But um, yeah, it's um, it's a really I mean, the reason why is it's like a it's a little easy gift to you to be like you have such a beautiful life and I have such a beautiful life and we really have to enjoy the every single moment. Every single moment. Tony says something. Um, when he's talking to Kath, actually at this moment, talking about suicide. And he says, she says something, they're talking about how many times she's watched this ride along Kevin Hart movie. And I, and Tony ends with a statement that says, but you can't rewind, you can't rewatch life. You have one life. And he said, I think that's what brings so much magic to it is that you can't rewind it you have to literally love and live every single moment the good the bad the ugly it's all a part of life and that's what makes it so beautiful and I loved that statement from Tony because it was a positive statement yeah. and something that like is true and, and and he wasn't being pessimistic about it so I loved that and it really I feel that way about my life I'm like I love every I, I, I try I mean everyone's human you you have dark moments but I will take a second and I'll be like I am so grateful I'll look at Hassan and be like I just want to tell you I'm so grateful I get to sleep with sleep next to you tonight yeah. I'll say that like every so often because I'm like I know there will be a, a time when we have to be apart yeah and I'm just super grateful for this right now totally I, I I I love I love that it's just reinforcing that in you because yeah. I I know I have to be reminded of it because life can get in the way it does and you don't reach out for your husband's hand or you forget to tell your mom I love you before you know you walk out the door and exactly so uh, back to the episode sorry guys <laughs> but it but now you know the real reason why this show is so important to me. Um, so he he gets the courage um, to ask the nurse out after he goes to the service for Julian, which was really mm -hmm. sad because no one no one came no one came but except Daphne. for Daphne. And you know it it was interesting because you could see the hesitation in Emma. And I'll be honest with you, when I met my husband, um, I was a little hesitant. I yeah. mean you want to be the one and only in someone's life. Like yeah. that, that ego in you is like, you know, you don't, and, and I automatically was limiting him right off the start. And I, I was setting myself of it to be another failed relationship. Yeah. And I really identified with her of, of having a huge pause and being like, this is a lot to take on. Yeah. And I've waited way too freaking long, you know, for this. Yeah. Um, and then I then I really identified with the moment where he's with his dad and his dad's talking about like Nazis and then he's like kind of going about like uh, calling him Charlie and and then all of a sudden Tony gets him back to something really super simple mm -hmm. and it's this moment to where his dad recognizes him and just yeah. sees him exactly for who Tony is even through all the Alzheimer's yeah he said you're my boy yeah yeah and I it loved that it's so precious and Tony was like. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm your boy. Oh, it was so it was so precious. It was. And I think that that's all we really want. Yeah. Is our parents to just see us. Mm -hmm. And I love the metaphor that it was like it, it was about something mundane like he tore the wallpaper. Yeah. But in that moment, um being seen by his dad was like everything. Yeah. And it just oh, it just made my because you don't know how long it's been since he recognized Tony. No, you don't. It's kind of just like an unsaid thing. But then you could you kind of got a grasp that it's been a long time just yeah. by his reaction. And I think all of us can relate to being finally seen or have a moment with our parents to where you're like, oh, you do get me, you yeah. know, because we have so many moments where we're like, you don't know what, who the hell I am. Yeah. So then um, I think that moment gives him like you know, he's starting to feel pretty good about things and he breaks up with his psychiatrist yeah. and he goes off on him. I mean, he calls him every wonderful British term, twat, cunt. I loved it. <laughs> Cock. And he said it in his British accent. Yes. Which makes it just slightly more like, e it's slightly easier to hear <laughs> totally. with the British accent. 
Yeah, it's because not quite if I said, as crude. I know. Isn't it great that curse words? I mean, I, it is. It's a stereotype. I know, and you'll cringe, Ricky. But like everything that comes out of your mouth has a little less of a blow to it because it's got the accent. Because it yeah. sounds educated. Exactly. <laughs> sounds more sophisticated as opposed to like the Valley Girl accents yeah. or you know a twang or whatever. Exactly. It's funny how we so well. I guess it's the white privilege. Let's go back to episode one or whatever with me. But it's yeah. funny how you start to learn emotionally why you think of certain things. But it also is great to have a curse word with the British accent just because yes. they're taking the piss. Yes. Which sometimes you just have to do that. Um, so, yeah, he kind of goes off on the psychiatrist who deserved it. And then um, the psychiatrist actually reveals something pretty heavy here. And it's about his brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. Why, why do you think the psychiatrist did that? I don't know, but I'm going to guess it's because he wants Tony to realize that other people are going through stuff and he's just trying to like, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe that's not what his intention was. Maybe he, he just wants his business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it know, doesn't, yeah. who knows what he's, he's not a great person. So I can't imagine that he would be doing that to benefit anyone else. But um, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But then when he does tell Tony, Tony's kind of like really shocked. He doesn't. And then I think probably in his head, he's like, oh, that's why he's been saying all this time. Other people are going through stuff other than him. Other people are going through pain that, just like Tony. But they don't like they don't they're not as outright as it as as Tony has been. And he's said that in the last few episodes, you know, back from episode four with the comedy. And he mm-hmm. like t- tells him you don't have to be so like ruin other people's times because your pain everyone has pain do you think that you yourself like do you ever take other people's pain for granted I know I do I I do it with the people closest to me unfortunately my sisters you know a lot of times I don't know because you know you always uh, you know the comparison game it's like yes. the death of us right yes of my pain's worse than yours or oh my god she's so messed up when you want to make yourself feel better and then it's crazy that it's the people that you love the most, or at least for me. Have you have you ever been in a situation where you're like, oh, wow, I really. Yeah, with my mom. Yeah. I'm, I've, my mom and I have are super duper close, and I'll keep this short, but um, I've been hard on her. And, and I, like, like, learning about myself and, and everything, I've come to learn a lot about my mom. And I just like haven't given I'd, I haven't had the patience for her um, or given her like the patience and the understanding like I should have. And I'm lucky that I get to kind of change that narrative now. Yeah. But she's that would be the one that I would probably yeah. it just I, I don't know what the, what what it was. You know what it is? I think sometimes the person that a lot of people that were a lot alike we want to be so individual and yeah. deny that we're anything like them um, and make ourselves like that separation allows us to be like independent and different. Yeah. And a lot of times the most beautiful part is, is that you are similar. You yeah. came from her womb, you yeah. know, and me and my sisters, like I helped raise my sisters. Yeah. I helped give them some of their neuroses, but I also set the example of like, what not to do. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, it's it's an interesting thing. And I, I, I love his relationship with his brother. Yeah. And I love that he finally sees his brother. And his brother's name is Matt. They don't say his name very much in it. And I, I think it's so important to say people's names. Yeah. Because I'm really bad with names. Yeah. So Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony promises to his brother he's not going to kill himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and he really lets him know that George is everything, his little nephew. And then he says this beautiful thing about liking his job and that the, the shitty newspaper gives him worth. Yes. And he he brings up a whole thing of like why people want to be featured on the paper. Mm-hmm. And it's because they want to be they want to leave a mark of I was here. Yeah. I think that's the other thing I've recognized, too, about not having kids is that like at least with a child like you know, it's your DNA, you have a line going. So it's kind of like, what, how do you leave your footprint in this life? And that's another reason why I relate to, to Tony. Yeah. And, and Emma is, they're never gonna have kids. Yeah. But I also think that that is cool to have 
a legacy that isn't just um, automatically in your children. Because I think people that do have children should also have a legacy that's outside of that because yeah. that's not their full identity. Yeah. And um, so I think that that's cool that like you're going to have a legacy going forward and it, and, and it's, and it's different and it's your own. Yeah. So I, I like that. And I hope that I mean, I, I do want a kids eventually, but I would also like to leave a, a mark. That's like just me, like just yeah. my own thing. And it's also kind of going with the whole philosophy behind this of, he doesn't believe there's an afterlife, so live yeah. in the now. Yeah. And not to hold on this idea of you leaving a legacy or or something yeah. that, you know, people can hold on to, but that your every moment of every day really matters because we don't know what's gonna happen. Exactly. Exactly. So I love that, you know, he sits there and then he goes around the circle of his office mates and he says Lenny is his human stress ball. Sandy is brilliantly interested in life. Mm -hmm. Kath, he thinks for annoying him with her benign questions to distract him yeah. from suicide. Um, and then, you know, he, he says this analogy, which really, like, I don't know what, why it just made me cry. But he said to his brother, "Try you're, it's like you're trying to save an injured rat from a trap. And that rat just can't change the world. He's so frustrated. Mm -hmm. But he realizes that he can change himself, like, by not struggling and tearing his arm off, like, in yeah. the freaking trap. Yeah. Um, I think we do that so much. Mm -hmm. Where we just want to, like, fix everything. But th all we can do is literally work on ourselves to be yeah, better. Exactly. Just go back to the basics and, and focus inward. Because you can't control anything outside of yourself. Yeah. It's a, it's pretty cool. It, he, uh, he ends up asking, you know, Emma out and, you know, she finally, you know, has, she finally, you know, she's like on that fence about dating him because yeah. of his sadness. Um, and it's interesting cause you don't know if she's going to go for it or not. She does the big maybe. Yeah. And, um, I think the beauty of this episode was it really ends with the two women who've really changed most in his life, him mm -hmm. and it's Anne. And Anne says memories are, is, is all we are. And she's like, I'd, because he asked like, do you miss him? And she's like, well, I'd rather live missing him. Like we, we started yeah. the episode than him living and missing me. She's like, I just don't have any regrets. And then, um, you know, he comes to the realization of don't punish people who don't deserve it. Like, it feels mm -hmm. good to punish an asshole, but yeah. like, you know, the Lennies of the world mm -hmm. don't do it. And they talk, uh, they go a little bit further, but the very end, I think, is really sweet because they do kind of a roundabout of a wrap up of everybody's life. Yep. And not everyone's perfect. Like, Pat, the mailman, gets some whiskey. <laughs> um, Daphne is cleaning out Julian's garage or garage, as yeah. they say. And then um, his brother, where do they end with him? I think in a new therapist. Yeah, with his wife. Yeah. And then um, he gives a note to the fat kid that says he's not going to, uh, that was teasing yeah. George, that he's not going to hurt him. Um, and then what, oh, you know what it is, is uh, life with Brian. They end with Sandy's story. Yes. What do you think that story was about? Because we don't get to read it. What do you think through Sandy's viewpoint is? I don't know. I really don't know because he's still kind of like a a mystery to me. Yeah. I mean, I know he's in deep, deep pain from the his wife leaving him and stuff. I have no idea. Maybe like his life before or like, um, I don't know. What do you think? I think that's why I do this podcast <laughs> is uh, when I don't know the answer, I, I think I look for it and I ask questions. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that I don't understand, um, even good people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what motivates you? Like yeah. the, the w women who do the Angel Hearts Rescue. Like I, I love I, I love volunteering in dogs. I mean, yeah. that's the reason. Another reason why the show speaks to my heart is Ricky Gervais is a huge dog activist. But like there are when you go into activism in any way. Um, there's a lot of pain in it because you wouldn't advocate for it if yeah. it weren't in the dark somewhere. And um, I just, you know, sitting across from those women and, and just seeing day in, day out what they do here locally in Kansas City and, and the condition of the dogs. And mm -hmm. it's, it's um, I had to ask the questions because it's so easy to look away. Yeah. Um, and that's why, like, I, you know, I push you guys, you know, about activism, too, of, like, really understanding, like, the why behind things because yeah. a lot of times you look at things and it's easier just to shrug your shoulders and say, you know what? He's just a crazy hoarder. Yeah. 
Um, but he has a story. He does. And you'll find out more in season okay, two. Good. Okay, I good. put you in the pressure cooker. I know. <laughs> and then the episode ends, I mean, yes, with Emma. Um, and she says, yes, she'll go with him. But we. Uh, what I really love and sticks in my head is the snow globe. Mm-hmm. I kind of had a feeling I knew what was going to happen with the snow globe because Ricky is at like a tabloid station, like a magazine stand. And he's kind of looking and Kevin Hart's face catches his eye and he's kind of like, mm. you can tell he's thinking. I was like, uh oh, I see where this is going. Mm. So then it's, it pans to like Kath going into the office and she sits down and I'm like, she's going to look at that snow globe. She's going to see it. Look at it. Look at it now. And uh, she does. And it's Kevin Hart's big grin on his face and that snow globe and she just <laughs> smiles and I'm like oh I love that because brought a smile at her face she loves the, she obviously yeah. loves Kevin Hart I love Kevin Hart I do so too he is the best he really is the freaking best and he's super like commercial and mainstream now but I don't care I don't know he's actually gone that we'll have to talk we love our comedy men yes. with the dark past but um as we wrap up this season six episode uh, Kevin Hart's done some freaking comedy that's like woof, about his divorce, yes. about people who have kind of taken him for granted, and yeah. then also how he, how marriage is not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. And no matter what, like whether you go through, like if someone cheats on you, you stay together, like yeah. we'll have to have a whole Kevin Hart episode. We'll I'm have to down get, for it's that. It's so good. It's Aaron so good. Aaron's like, like, hell yes. Well, thank you for listening. Um, this show's really special to me, and, you know, it's a little niche and weird and it's not like I don't know like Grey's Anatomy but I and not that Grey's Anatomy is bad but thank you for for going on this little journey with me and allowing me to process uh, my own emotions about death and life and Ricky Gervais thank you for making me laugh when things are tough because things can be really tough but life is beautiful and um, you remind me to hold my dog a little closer to advocate for them and to advocate for the people around me um, that are just good people so thank you and uh, thank you for for being my my uh, partner in crime in this I loved it I love it we'll wait for season two we'll hop back on the mic all right see you later (laughs)